Luke chapter 10, verse 40 to 42. But matter was cumbered about much serving. And came to him, that came to Jesus and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Matter, matter. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken from her. One thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I speak quickly on the subject, knowing and doing the needful. Knowing and doing the needful. And our objective is just one. Understanding the power of a focused life. The power of a focused life. We saw in the life and in the family of Mary and Martha, the brethren of Jesus, the brethren of Lazarus, Where we had Martha and Mary, two sisters with two different characters, two different attitudes, two different behavior to life. Martha was always very busy, cumbered with things that did not matter. Mary sat at the foot of the master almost on a permanent basis trying to find out what was needful. At the resurrection of Lazarus, their attitudes and behaviors were different. Martha felt that Jesus came too late. And when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha said, oh, I know he will rise up in the last day. Mary had a different attitude. The summary of this is, Mary always knew and did the needful. Martha always did the needless. Knowing and doing the needful. This lockdown, in most probability, has confirmed to you that there are things that are not as necessary as you thought. There are things that, were, that are not as vital as you thought. If there were no lockdown, there were Visits you would have made that were not necessary. There were things you would have bought that were not necessary. There is a way you would have spent time that wasn't necessary. Appointments you would have kept that were not necessary. And now the lockdown showed that those appointments did not hold and nothing spoiled. Those timelines and deadlines and urgencies didn't hold and nothing spoiled. In fact, maybe things were better. Take note of the following. 
Number one, there are things that place a great demand on your time that are not necessary. Matter. You are wasting time on what does not matter. There are things that place a great demand, okay, let me put it on our time that are not necessary. Is it endless browsing on the internet? Is it endless chatting on platforms? Two, there are things that place a great demand on our effort and energy that are not necessary. They place a great demand on our effort and energy that are not necessary. Three, there are things that weigh us down and tire us out that are not necessary. It's a matter. You are being, you are combat. You are weighed down by too many things, and these things are not necessary. So there are things that place a great demand on our time that are not necessary. There are things that place a great demand on our attention. Rather, a great demand on our effort and energy that are not necessary. There are things that place a great demand or that weigh us down and tire us out that are not necessary. You are weighed down, you are tired, and you have achieved nothing. Fourthly, there are things that occupy our thought and consume our attention that are not necessary. You spend your thought on what didn't matter. You know the way we spend time, you spend thought too. There are things that occupy our thought and consume our attention that are not necessary. Finally, there are things that consume our resources that are not necessary. The gambler has not gambled for a while now. And nothing spoiled. And in fact, it's better off. That consume you. You spent money that you didn't need to spend. You wasted resources you didn't need to waste. That was the case of, of matter. Jesus said, I'm not here for food. I want to make impact on your lives. You are spending time, spending energy, spending resources, cooking, spending all these things, and they are not necessary. There are things that place a great demand on your time, and they are not necessary. There are things that place a great demand on your effort and energy, and they are not necessary. There are things that weigh you down, tire you out, and they are not necessary. There are things that occupy your thought, consume your attention, and they are not necessary. There are things that consume your resources, you spend money on, and those things are not necessary. Please understand. That the priorities of your life determines the prosperity of your destiny. If you can identify what the priorities of your life are, they will determine whether or not your destiny will prosper and to the extent that destiny will prosper. The priorities of your life determines the prosperity of your destiny. How important is focus? The life of focus. Knowing and doing what is needed or needful. How important is a life of focus? Number one, a life of focus makes one a focus in the earth. A life of focus makes a person to become a focus in the earth. Every 
every time you see a man that suddenly became a focus, it's a focused life. Second, a life of focus brings speed and progress to life. Speed. When your pursuit is clear, your speed is high. When your pursuit is clear, your speed is high. Paul the apostle achieved practically more than any other apostle in the New Testament. He wrote half of the Bible, of the New Testament. He said, one thing have I desired. One. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. One thing, one thing, one thing. All right. Move all the way to verse 12. Okay, let's start from verse 10. He said, from verse 9. Eight. Yeah, doubtless I count not my, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but do that I may win Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the Lord but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead not that I have already attained or that I am already perfect but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus but I count not myself to have apprehended. I have not reached anywhere yet. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth to those things which are before. Which are before. It was David who said one thing have I desired. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. One thing. One thing. A life of focus. And, and, and if you look at David, he achieved more, more, much more than any other of his age mate in, in the Bible. Look at Paul the Apostle. The life of focus brings speed and progress to life. When your focus is scattered, your progress is aborted. Thirdly, a life of focus is key to impact in life. You make mark with focus. It's key to impact in life. You make marks with focus. You make marks. It's key to impact. Where we read already from Paul the Apostle in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14 will suffice. For, for Verse 13. 12 to 14 but verse 13 he said, I forget one thing. I forget what is behind and I reach forth. I am focused on what is in front. 14. I press towards the mark that is called impact. Focus will always cause a man to make the mark. I press towards the mark. A life of focus is impact. If your life is not focused, your marks can never be made. Fourthly, a life of focus is a life of influence and authority. It's a life of influence and authority. For this purpose was the Son of Man manifested. Not many, just this purpose. First John chapter 3 and in verse 8, that he might destroy the works of the enemy, the be part. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
A life of purpose is a life of authority and influence. That is, you, you have influence on people. You have authority in life. I came across this statement that the whole world allows a man to pass who knows where he is going. The, the whole world will stand aside and allow a man pass if he knows where he is going. The life of purpose, focus, is key to influence and authority. And I have discovered that the one who knows the way will always take the lead. If you know the way, if you know what you want out of life, you always take the lead. Finally, the life of focus is the life of wisdom. You live wisely when you live focusedly. If your eye is single, your body will be full of light. Matthew chapter 6 verse 22. If your eye is single, your body will be full of light. Light equals wisdom. Light equals insight. Light equals illumination. There are many people today who would have gone farther than they, 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 they have gone now. In their, in their lives, in their careers, in their businesses, in their endeavors on earth, they would have gone much farther than they have gone if they have been more focused than they are. But energy, when we say divided energy is scattered destiny. What do you do? Knowing and doing the needful. What do you do? Number one, identify activities. And associations that constitute your priorities. Identify them. Activities, associations that constitute your priorities that you are to put in front of you. That is priority means in front of you. Put in front of you. Identify them. Because there are activities and associations that take you closer to your purpose that cause you to achieve what you are on earth to achieve and to fulfill your God ordained destiny faster identify them those activities those associations that will assist you faster to reach where you are meant to reach secondly activity identify activities and associations that constitute your posteriority. Posterior. In medicine, when we do anatomy and you are talking about the relation of nerves and arteries and so on, when you say something is anterior, is in front. Something is posterior, is behind. Something is superior, is above. Something is inferior, is down. Something is lateral, is to the side. Median is to the middle. So when, I, when we are saying posteriority, we are talking about what to put behind. Identify activities and associations to that constitute your posterioritys. P-O-S-T-E-R. That's right. O-R-I-T-I-E-S. And that is what to put behind you. I think the lockdown has made it easy to identify what should be put behind. Those kind of friends and those kind of people that were not really needed. That you thought you couldn't do without. The boyfriend, the girlfriend, whatever it was. The bad influence on your life. Identify activities, associations to put in front. Act identify activities and association to put behind. I think for the sake of those that may not understand these terms, we can put in bracket to things to put in front of you. What to put in front of you. And then number two, in bracket down, what to put behind you. And finally, 
put each activity and association where they belong with all wisdom. You have identified what to put in front of you. You have identified what to put behind you. The third thing to do is go ahead and put each one where they belong. The things that you are to put in front of you, put them with emphasis. The things you are to put behind you, put them behind with all wisdom. I want you to mark the word wisdom in this point number three. Put at each activity and association where they belong with all wisdom. Don't send anybody a text message and say, I want to let you know that after this lockdown, I am putting you behind me. <laughs> I'm putting you behind me. I just discovered that you are not necessary in my life. That you wasted my time. You wasted my energy. You wasted my resources. You wasted everything. That's not correct. That's not correct. Don't do that to anybody. With all wisdom. With all, you just begin to cut down interaction. You begin to cut down communications. All right? You are friendly. You are still, I mean, the Bible says we should love everybody. But you know that this person is toxic for your life and toxic for your destiny. That this activity is a waste of your life and a waste of your future. That's right. And then put each activity and association where they belong with all wisdom. Are you learning anything tonight? Do that. And, and, and watch your life for one month. Watch your life for three months. You will be shocked. You realize that you are able to read all the books you've, you've kept aside. You couldn't read. You are able to pray for longer than you, than you had done before. You are able to study the word. You are able to, 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 to save more money, to invest more resources, and to do more things by the fact that those influences that give you contrary counsels and influences that limit your motivation, influences that, that took your time and took everything, they are, they are off. You're able to gain speed. You know life is full of lessons and the universe is a university. This lockdown period, I believe that at the end of the day, the devil will regret it if he cost it. And or whoever caused the virus. If it was a, a scientific or, a, or a, a laboratory invention. Finally, what are the things that can constitute your priorities? Things that may constitute our priorities. Number one, investment in quality relationship with God. It's number one. Investment in quality relationship with God. Quality relationship with God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Ensuring that your relationship with God does not suffer it is put ahead of every single thing. Number two. That is, I'm talking about your prayer life, study of the word, everything that is, that is needed to make you vibrant, buoyant, and, 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 and effervescent. Number two. Development of quality relationship with family and valuable associations. Quality relationship with family and valuable associations. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. I think that will be First John chapter 4 verse 8. God is love. God is love. Deploying your love, enhancing the value of your wife, your children, your husband, enhancing the value of your value of your of the valuable when I say valuable associations, associations that bring out the best out of you, associations that motivate greatness out of you, 
Associations that push you to know God more. Associations that, 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 that sharpen you for the best. Investing in them. Relationship requires workmanship. I had an interview with a radio yesterday, an FM radio, uh, where they're playing the new song, Keep Holding On. And they're telling me, asking me, what advice do I have for families at this time, especially families that has entered into serious problems in the course of this lockdown? I said, what? <laughs> the pro problem inside lockdown. Lockdown was, apart from maybe financial problem that could bring pr pressure, Lockdown was an opportunity to bring husband closer to wife, father closer to children. Because everybody has been busy all this while. Children go to school in the morning in places like Lagos before they return back home. They, they have come back home before their father comes from the island, from his office, they have slept. And then he woke up in the morning and went to the office around 5 a.m. or so before the children will be going to school. So for 10 years, the child may not really know who the father is, apart from Sunday, Sunday morning. And this was an opportunity for the father to know his children and love his children and be whole family together, husband and wife. And then this is the opportunity. And then the same opportunity has become a, an opportunity where there is family problem. It's an abomination. The woman sent me a text message about a man who has been such a wayward man with he say 99% of their life together is with strange women. Satan, <laughs> until in this lockdown, no movement, he's with another woman. In the lockdown, he's locked down with another person. Wife and children are on their own. No movement, and the, no movement is with another woman. What a waste of life. What a waste of life. What, a, what an abomination. What kind of father did such a children acquire for the get? A husband did such a woman get? No. Your net worth is a function of your network. The network of relationship, quality relationship in your life is heavier than how much money you have. In our place, they say that the person who has people is, is bigger than the person who has money. And I believe so. Because there are things people will do for you that money can't do for you. Development of quality relationship with family and valuable associations. A man who will have friends must know, show himself friendly. If, if you believe that this person deserves to be your priority, that is somebody in front of you that is valuable, you develop the relationship well. Number three is discovery, development, and deployment of life's potential. Development. So what can be your priorities? First is the investment in quality relationship with investment in quality relationship with God. Second, development of quality relationship with family and valuable associations. And when I say family, it includes brothers and sisters and loved ones. Thirdly, discovery, development, and deployment of life's potentials. Finding what God has put in you, your purpose in life. The gifts, the graces, the talents. Developing them to excellent level. He says, see us down a man that is diligent in his business. Proverbs 19, 27. He will not stand before ordinary people. He will stand before kings. Diligent in his business. He will not stand before ordinary people. He will stand before kings. The discovery, the development, the deployment. That was why Paul the Apostle told Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Okay, 22, 29, sorry. I said 19, 20. Okay, 22, 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. You shall not stand before mean men. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 
1 verse 6 and 7. He said, I put you in remembrance, brands, that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. We'll stop there. Put, stir up the gift. Another place he said, neglect not the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of my hands. I think that must be the, the verse before that. Neglect not the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of the hands of the presbytery. Neglect not. What has God put inside you? Discover it. Develop it and deploy it. Let me warn somebody. When you discover your gift, you need discipline to develop it. And when you begin to deploy it, not everybody will be happy with you. You know, we live in a world where people think that life is all about competition. So there are those who are going to feel intimidated that you are that endowed, that you are that engraced, that you are that gifted. They will feel intimidated and feel angry. That was what happened to Joseph. His brethren felt intimidated. They felt angry because of the kind of things coming from him. But let me say two things to you. Number one, it is not your fault that you have that gift. Number two, you are going to give account of whatever God put inside you. Discover it. Develop it. Deploy it. For the benefit of humanity and the benefit of eternity. Not just for the sake of making money on the earth. Not just for the sake of being popular in the earth. For impact on humanity and eternity. The discovery, development and deployment of life's potential. Number five. Number four. Engagement what can constitute your, the priorities of your life, of one's life? Investment in quality relationship, development of quality relationship with family and valuable associations, discovery, development, and deployment of life's potentials. Number four, engagement, involvement, and investment in kingdom assignment and expansion. Engagement, involvement, investment. In kingdom assignment and kingdom expansion. The songwriters wrote, fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus will we pass from this earth and its toiling. Only remembered by what we have done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Engagement. Involvement. An investment into kingdom advancement and excitement. The time of your life. The abilities and energy of your life. The resources of your life. Deploy it. For, the, for, for, for kingdom assignment and expansion. Dragging souls into from hell to heaven. And aggressive evangelism. Church planting. Said so you shall serve the Lord your God. Not you may. Not you can. You shall. It's mandatory. Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. One reason why you are on earth is to serve the Lord your God. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and in verse 13. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God, reverence God. Keep his commandment. What is his commandment? John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not called me, but I have called you. I have chosen you. And I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. Your time, your resources. Your energy spent for the kingdom. That is one of the best ways to live. Because if you finish this earth and you appear in eternity only to realize that your investment was in the earth. What will you do? Your energy was spent for what to eat and wear and drive. Your money was spent for, for the temporal earthly things. No treasure in, in heaven. Nothing waiting for you. No soul waiting for you there. What will you do? You wasted a lifetime. Engagement, involvement, investment in kingdom and assignment and expansion. And number five, readiness and preparedness for eternity this must be 
the priorities of life. Readiness and preparedness for eternity. Readiness and preparedness for eternity. Because the dust will return to dust, but the spirit will return to God. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. And Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto man, wants to die. After that is judgment. Every one of us, no matter how rich, no matter how talented, no matter how anointed, no matter how, how connected, no matter how educated, will one day leave this world and meet with Jehovah and stand before a judge that cannot be influenced, cannot be bribed. If you are not ready and not prepared for eternity and the trumpet sounds and it's, or it's time to go and you step out from time into eternity and you meet your maker unprepared, what will you do? You end in hell, everlasting quarantine, eternal lockdown in the flames of fire, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Readiness and preparedness for eternity. Beloved, I'll end here because of time. Knowing and doing the needful. Invest in quality relationship with God. Develop quality relationships with family and valuable associations. Discover, develop and deploy life's potentials. Engage, involve, invest in kingdom assignment and expansion. And be ready and prepared for eternity. Hear this in conclusion. You matter in life and in eternity to the extent that you do those things that matter with your life. Say that again. You matter in this time and in eternity to the extent that you do the things that matter with your life. Your life is going to matter in this time and matter in eternity if you did the things that matter with your life. Stand upon your feet where you are and let us pray.